Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Thanks for clicking on today's video. We're going to catch up on some pickups. It's been a, a while, probably two months. I think I did a June pickup, but that was like in the start of June. So got a little bit of stuff here. I want to incorporate some new ideas into this pickups video. Instead of getting the games, showing you them, putting them on the shelves and then hoping to get to them. I wanted to get the games, play them and then put them on the shelf. So I get a little bit of an idea of what the games are like. And I want to put some of the footage within the video here and there, just little clips and just maybe give a little bit of a review of my thoughts of the game. So we're going to try something a bit different. We're going to see how it goes, you know, just to sort of really get a bit of more interactivity within the video. So yeah, subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like this sort of content. We're going to do comics, video games, art, lots of stuff. We're going to get stuck straight into it. Now, I've got a few PS4 games to show off at the start. Now, I got this game Bard's Tale. Now, if you saw a PC video I did a while ago, I got a Bard's Tale on the PC. This is Bard's Tale 4, the director's cut. So I really wanted to buy this to sort of see what it was like, you know, really get into it. I know the style of the original Bard's Tale, that there are a series of games that go back, you know, into the 80s, I'd say, back in the old PC days. So with this one, I'll put some footage within the, in the video here and there. And yeah, you know, it was a little bit sort of overwhelming at the start, just with, there's just, when you start the game, there's just so much sort of stuff that they introduce you to with all the skills and the buttons. And you know, I'm still not really used to the, to the PlayStation 4 controller and there's just so many things to use. I just, I like the simplicity of just A and B buttons. But anyway, this is a game I really want to get into that you can sort of see by some of the shots I'm putting up that the colors are really good. The combat is a, um, a turn-based sort of combat system, and I think I could really enjoy that sort of game. And it's a game that I'd like to sit or, sit down with, with for a few hours and you know to sort of yeah, enjoy and enjoy the story and talk to the NPCs. But it's not something that you can sort of jump into for like an hour or so. Now I've got these two games for like thirty dollars, so fifteen dollars each. The first one's another PS4 game. This is Tekken Seven now. I saw on someone else's channel, Pixel Paul, that he bought it for the VR sort of um, aspect of the game. And I always thought to myself, that's true. I think I'd like to sort of, you know, experience the, the VR sort of style of the game. The actual, the normal story mode is of, of the game goes through where you just sort of, you go through a story, you get into a few fights. I've played a little bit of that. You'll see a sort of fight when I put one up in a minute. But I was a little bit sort of disappointed with the VR mode of that. It was just a, basically a... Um, just like a, you can sort of see on the screen here and there when I show it, it was just basically a, a free for all and it was a timeless thing. There was no objective. You were just basically beating the shit out of each other and that was it. The graphics look really good. Um, I like the VR. You could look around obviously with the VR. I, I didn't mind it, but I think it was a bit disappointing. You know, I guess good thanks to them for do, at least trying some, some of the VR for that game. So, but yeah. The other side of the tech, and I was definitely sort of get into that a little bit more. It was an interesting sort of style of game. And the other game that I got for $15 was this Callisto Protocol. Now this is an R-rated game, as you can see down here, and I haven't played too many like violent R-rated games. So when I put this on, it sort of made me laugh a few times at how extreme this game was. And I sort of enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's basically a ship that sort of crash lands. And is it, was that this one or the other one? No, it was this one, yeah. This, I think this is, no, yeah, this is one. This is the ship that crash lands. And yeah, just basically the the whole sort of station sort of infested by these undead sort of zombie sort of things. And yeah, man, you just sort of try to survive. It's sort of one of those survival things where you sort of, you know, get to the next part. So I did enjoy that. <laughs> I got was this PS5 game Forspoken. 
Now this was only $9, and I'd see it there a couple of times, I'm like, you know what, a PS5 game for $9. And I'd actually heard a few people sort of sledge it a bit in other sort of YouTube videos, so I wanted to find out for myself, you know. So at the start of the, of the game, I, you know, it's sort of, um, I'll put up some footage now so you can have a look. And at the start of the game, I didn't really know what the whole uh, sort of story was around it, like what was happening. It seemed a little bit sort of boring, but I sort of stuck with it. And then I got to the section where basically, you know, it sort of jumps off into the real sort of story of the game. So, yeah, it, again, it was a lot of stuff in your face at, the, at one time. For me, it's a bit too much. Like it's like press these, press these two together, do this, do that. But within the middle of like a boss fight, you can probably see some of that in here as well. And yeah, so but again, the colors were beautiful. The sound was good, the graphics was really great. And I, and I think it would be definitely another game that I would continue to play through a little bit more, just to sort of get a little bit more idea of as we go further into the game. But that's full spoken, so that was all right. system I am really enjoying collecting for and excited to collect for is the Mega Drive. So I got this Mega Drive game, this is God's from the Bitmap Brothers, um, old renegade sort of stuff with the Bitmap down here. So I've got a few um, Bitmap Brothers games, I want to get more so, but God's is one of my old favourite platform puzzle sort of games from the Amiga back when I was a teenager. And I, really, I thought I wanted to try it with the sort of Mega Drive pad, but I've had so much fun with it. It's difficult in terms of like trying to solve what all the puzzles were. I wanted, I did go online and sort of look at some of the, how you sort of, you know, get to certain areas where there's sort of, you know, you can sort of see there's treasure in that there. So I haven't done it yet, but I've just sort of been mucking around with it in the first world and I put some footage in. I want to try to update the footage that I want to add to this video. So, but yeah, God's is just amazing. I'm sort of been a little bit picky. It's hard, to, it's not like you just go online and just buy a, buy a PS4 game or a Switch game trying to find the right Mega Drive game that, that fits your sort of, you know, what's the word, sort of criteria. So I wanted to sort of get a good condition one that displays well on the spine. But it, like I said, these games are pushing 30 years old now, so it's sort of a bit difficult. But I got that one, and there's a couple of other uh, Mega Drive games I'm looking forward to getting on the hand and a try. But I'm really enjoying that. And like I said, I love the simplicity, at least with the controls and just the you know, just the jump and the, and, the, and the fire button. I'm sure there's a bit more strategy involved in the game, but you love sitting on the beanbag, just playing that, enjoying the old sort of, you know, pixel graphics, Bitmap Brothers, the music, it's really good. And yeah, so that's God's, I'm really happy with that one. Now, I also got another 3DS game. So if you, I don't know if you probably don't remember, but I've got an American 3DS. So Ali plays American 3DS games, you know, so I've, I'm sort of got collecting 3DS games 
for the American and also for the PAL, this, the Australian console. So I picked this one up off, I think it was off Amazon for like 40 bucks. So this is Bit Trip Saga. So I, I remember the Bit Trip beat on the play on the PlayStation on the iPad. You know, like it was one of the first rhythm-based games that I played ever, and I thought it was absolutely incredible. And I didn't even realise that there was a there were several other games as well, six complete games. So there's other sort of games in that series. So I haven't played this one yet, and I do want to sort of you know what's the sort of when they say go back and play it. So I'll insert some footage into this into this video somewhere, but. And another, I've got a couple of games that I got just in the last week. I haven't played this one yet. This is Chibi Robo Zip Lash. Now I got this off Amazon for fifteen dollars delivered. Sometimes I just sort of go on Amazon and just sort of check to see what sort of PS4 VR games, PS5, you know, 3DS, and and this one was on there for fifteen bucks delivered. I thought I'd grab it. Grab it. it looks like it's a sort of a platform sort of style game. So yeah, I haven't had the chance to put it on yet. I don't have a 3DS for the PAL sort of Australian sort of version, so I've got to play it on the 2DS, but we'll check it out. Yeah, so, yeah, that was it. I was just, it's just so nice to get cheap, cheap 3DS games, and it's certainly titles, I've never heard of that title, so, at least not for the 3DS, I know there's a Chibi Robo for what the, uh, the GameCube, so, really happy with that one. And then I've got my sort of, in my head, my list of like games that are sort of at the forefront of what I want to pick up, and this one, was sort of, I walked into JB Hi-Fi and I finally got a copy of Diablo 4. This was just $49, so it's gone down a little bit in price, thankfully, so, yeah, I put put like three or four hours in it yesterday, it got up to like 11 or 12, level, 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 11 or 12, and yeah, really enjoying it. It's a, yeah, again, it's one of those sort of things you just know that you're in for a, a deep, dark sort of dive into a video game, so, and the thing is, it's quite simple to play. I'm, at the moment, I'm just sort of button mashing, you know, with the rogue. So I thought I'd just, you know, have a bit of fun with that. Put a few hours on. I didn't sort of want to play any other games, just so I thought I'd just sort of stick to that one. Most of the video games. Now the other day, I hit up eight charity shops in Coffs Harbour. I had a few hours. I had to go in for an appointment into Coffs Harbour, so I had a couple of hours before I went to work. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to hit up some charity shops. Now 
I had went, I found some that I never even knew existed. There were like six within a almost walking distance around a block. Six charity shops. I've got a little bit here and there, not too much sometimes, a bit more here. So this is what I got. So all this cost me $47. So I got this Wii Play. Um, I thought it was Wii Party. I, I've already got Wii Play. I just I, for some reason I thought it was Wii Party, which is I don't have, but I picked that one up for $5. So that's the Wii game. Um, there was another Wii game there for $5, which is this Wii Sports Party. I don't have that one. So I thought I'd just pick these up for five bucks. There's no manual in that one, but there was a manual in the other one. Um, a couple of other video games that I got. I got the original Assassin's Creed, actually. I, one I don't have on the Xbox 360. I've got a big run of Xbox 360 Assassin's Creed games. And I didn't have the first one. I've got it on like PS3, but I didn't have it on Xbox 360. So I picked that one up. That was $1. And I'm going to admit, I haven't played any Assassin's Creed games, but it's been on my list to play some Assassin's Creed. So now I've got that on the Xbox 360. I've got the big screen out the back, so it's going to give me the opportunity to play that. So that's in, it was in, there was all these stickers, it was heaps dirty, and then it sort of cleaned up really well after that. So I was happy to get that one for the sort of, for a dollar. Another game I picked up for a dollar was this Halo 3. No, this is the classic so but the thing is like they put tape on it so you can't sort of look at inside it so when i got home all it had was like halo 4 disc 2 you know so pretty random so lucky i just had a dollar because if i played more i'd be like Phew. and that's what and then the rest of it's just a few dvds i spent like a dollar on some of these so i got the human centipede too i've given up sort of selling and reselling DVDs. I just don't want to get into that kind of stuff. So all this is sort of for my own sort of enjoyment and, and watching sort of pleasure. So I've never seen a human centipede one and I'm a little bit reluctant to see watch this one but you know maybe one day I'll put it all on board just for a laugh. And we've got these old this is like a double movie pack. This is two movies from like the 40s. I think one's called Scared to Death and the Invisible Ghost. So for one dollar I picked that one up. I just love old sort of I just love old movies. I just love seeing the old acting, the old, you know, cinematography and directing and, you know, and just, and it'd be interesting to see what how sort of horror sort of scene they are from back in that day, back in the 40s. So, yeah, pick that one up. And then another one, I've got this Scary Godmother. Now, I've, I've got a hardcover comic book of this that I've had for so long. I don't know why I got it. And I just saw this one for a dollar in another charity shop and I thought, you know what, I'll just grab it and watch it. You know, I don't know too much about about it but you know it'll be it'll be fun to watch just on one of those days and i've got a couple of surfing dvds i do like to watch surfing dvds so there's a couple of like billabong odyssey and, and the double xl awards so i just like big wolf wave surfing there and on this on the right hand side so i just put them on upstairs when i'm doing something in the background so that they're a dollar each and i love notorious big as one of my favorite favorite rappers so when i saw this one for a dollar as well it'd be nice to sort of watch some you know original footage of him and some music and that so i was pretty that was good good pick up for a dollar and i picked this one up for three dollars it had three movies i bought it mainly for lockup but i when i went out the back to look at my dvds i already had lockup so anyway it's no big deal but i've never seen 16 blocks or the six day so that was a couple of other movies that were in there. So three dollars for that, three movies. You know, you can't sort of, <clears throat> good entertainment, good cheap entertainment. And I also got this, this is just an Australian thing, State of Origin, if you're, a, if, if you're in the rugby league or know about it, then that's like basically part one from the 1980s of the State of Origin. So yeah, that's that. Good for me, because I want to see something. It's just the most brutal uh, contest like back in those days, like unbelievable. And the final DVD I got was this, Running on empty. This is like a almost like a Fast and the Furious sort of style game from like the late 80s. It's an Australian movie, actually. I didn't really really at the time. I just remember watching it when I was like really young. I don't think I've watched it since the first time when I was 10, but I always remember the name. It's got some sick muscle cars in it, like Australian cars, American muscle cars. It's pretty funny. Angela was she didn't like it at all, but you know, it's got some nice women in it, and yeah, it's, it's just a nice real sort of journey back to Australian sort of, you know, that sort of, that era. And I did get a PC game from a, from a, a shop. So I've got this Heroes of Modern Magic 5. Now I love this series, even though I really haven't sort of played too much of it. I don't think I've got any of them, but it was always one of those series I wanted to get. So to see number five, and yeah, it's, um, I'm really happy with that one. They had a few other PC games, but I wasn't sure if they were sort of more online sort of base ones. So yeah, pick that one up. 
was really happy to get a nice piece of the game for the collection and I, one I'd definitely love to sit down and just check out, so there's that. Alright, now, I went to Foster in July. Now, I wanted to, it was, I went down there to meet Tony actually. It was a friend that I haven't seen for a long time. We worked together like 20 years ago and we sort of kept in contact here and there. He loves video games, he loves computers, he loves music and we sat there all afternoon drinking beer and just talking about that kind of stuff. He, I was listening, listening to his music, he's a good, an excellent guitarist and I got a lot of music off him that he told me, he goes, check these out, check this out. And he gave, and he gave me, as soon as we met each other, he's, he goes into his pocket, he pulls out these two, you know, Nintendo 64 pieces, you know what I mean? So he, gave, he must have known that I needed a rumble pack, maybe from the videos, I said, oh, I still don't have a rumble pack. So he gave me a working rumble pack. So I'm really happy to have that. Thanks for that, Tony. And also this little sort of Game Boy player. So I, as far as I know, I haven't looked into it too much that you, could put in your like your Pokemon Blue or your Red or whatever, and then you can basically play with those characters on the 64. I think it might be on Pokemon Stadium. Like I said, I don't know, but it's definitely something I'd like to investigate and check it out. So thanks to Tony for that, and you can sort of see us having a few beers. It was just yeah, it was awesome, man. Like we were sort of just left, and he's like saying, oh, "I haven't had to talk like that for a while," and I'm and I was the same. You know, we had so much in common, and we were just laughing and drinking and. Yeah, and, and the other reason, like, there was another day, the next, I think it was the Monday, that was the Sunday afternoon, and the Monday morning, I'm like, right, we're going to get up, it was pretty cold, cold and grey down in Foster, actually, and, it, and I'm, I'm like, I'm going to get up, I'm going to do a massive charity shop hunt, you know what I mean, I'm going to go to all the places I can, I'm going to look around the place, you know, I thought, we'll make a whole episode on it, you know, and then I found nothing, mate, I found nothing, you know, the, I went even went to a video game store, EB Games, and the, the same as all the others, they're just overpriced shit, you know what I mean? So it just doesn't get me excited to go in there. And then I'm just like, I get home like three hours later and I'm just like, I got nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it was funny, I was in one one of the, the charity shops, you know, you look, sort of look find the game section, it's just that cliche sort of selection where you got, you know, your, your Sims PC games, your, your SingStar, your Anim, what was it, the Connect Animals 360 and, you know, things like that, and, you know, uh, what's the other one? Bloody eye toy thing. And it was just so, I should have taken a photo, it would have been funny, you know, so yeah, there's that. So overall, we didn't get too much down there, but I've also forgot to show some of the other charity shop items I got from Coffs the other day. And I fain looked, now instead of, instead of looking at all the sort of, just the DVDs and the games, I look at some of the clothing, you know, so I, I picked up this, this Haltech hat. So if you know sort of, High performance cars, how, how tech do engine management, man, engine management systems. So I picked that one for like four dollars, and I got this Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Warfare hat. So this was like four bucks as well. So I love hats, you know. So to find like a gaming hat, so I'm looking for my like gaming stuff, Marvel stuff, comic stuff, you know, whatever I can find. So I picked up a few T-shirts as well. So I got this Deadpool shirt for like six dollars. So I'm happy with that. I want to, these are the sort of things I want to find. It's nice, cool shirts just for my sort of collection. And I picked up also a, this is a, an Assassin's Creed Syndicate shirt. You can sort of see on the side there. So yeah, try to pick them all up from, from my side. This one was $3. I, you know, this one was $3. No, this one was $4. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so I picked that one up. And the final shirt I picked up was this Avengers Endgame. Again, this was 3 or $4. One was 3 that one was 4 So yeah, like, I love Endgame. Endgame's probably one of my favourite movies of all time, ever since Lord of the Rings, um, Return of the King, so it just strikes a nerve. So to find that shirt for a couple of bucks, awesome. And I got another gaming t-shirt. I paid a, lot, a fair bit of money for this, but I just when I saw it, I just wanted to have it in my collection. And this is the, a Golden Axe shirt, so this is like the original, not, actually it's not the original, I think it's like from the early 2000s or something like that. So this is a Mega Drive um, Golden Axe shirt. I just love it. I got, got this from Ukraine actually, so a long way away. I mean, I wanted to just pull the trigger. I think I paid like $90 for this one, but I just love it. So so that's that one there, so excellent. Now I'm trying to think, I've got a few, oh yeah, I've got a few comics too. So I've been sort of just buying a few comics here and there. I think I've got some more coming, where are they? Now I've got a couple of old, this one's not really golden age, but I've got a, this one's an eerie one. So this is, the original Eerie is like the first golden age horror comic, I believe. I love the cover and I love the, the sort of the, 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 the title art there. So this is a reprint by I, 
W. So I looked inside the sto stories. It's quite an interesting, lots of anthologies, so there's lots of small stories, but I love the cover. It's in a light, pretty low grade. You can sort of see it's got the chipping down the side, but I just love the cover. And it's like, this one's from 1963, so I grabbed that one. I think I paid like $75 for that one. And I've got another Golden Age comic too, though. This is Johnny Hazard. So I love that cover there. There's Lady Miss on the side. It, you know, it's a, I look, look through the, the through it, and it's, yeah, it's got some pretty good art. She's in it all the way through, sort of a bit of an antagonist, a bit of a pain in the ass for John, Johnny Hazard here. So this one, I should say this in the description, but it was the, the, the center file was sort of deta detached at the top staple. So I was a bit disappointed with that because I was looking to maybe get this one graded. But anyway, it's got some nice color there. This is like from 1948, you know, so it's a quite an old comic and I just love that cover there. You know, like the sort of, it's got the sort of the bondage sort of style where she's tied up there and yeah, nice. I like that book now. I think I only paid like $40 for that one. So, you know, I still think they should be more honest with their description, especially these old books. And I picked up, you know, I love Dave Stevens. He's one of my favorite artists. And I picked up this Orbit. Um, there's a, three books all together. So this is the cover of, of number one, Dave Stevens down over here. And I paid like 60 something dollars for these. Dave Stevens books are hard, are expensive, you know what I mean? So so to pick, and it, even harder to get in Australia too, like if you're in the US and that now, they're pretty available. Over here, it's hard to pick up stuff. So I grabbed, got this on auction and it come with one to three. So it's sort of sci-fi sort of stuff as you can sort of see there. So I was sort of, yeah, good to have them in the collection. It's actually not in, it's in pretty good condition actually when you look at it, because it's sort of like a square bound book there. So that's that. And the final pickup for the video is a Facebook Marketplace pickup. Now, I saw the listing for a free monitor in the village that I live in, you know? So I'm thinking, oh, awesome. It'll just be down the street or whatever. So on the morning that I went to pick it up, I looked it up on the map. And I'm like, oh man, it's right out the back in the mountains, do you know what I mean? And I've never been out there really. Wasn't sure what the road was like and I was almost gonna call it off. I'm like, I don't really wanna go out there. But anyway, I thought, you know what? As I always say, just do it, go out there. You never know what you're gonna find. You never know what's gonna happen. So I went out, picked up the um, picked up the monitor. It's such a beautiful area up there. I've never been up there. It's called Timbertop. And as you can see by the footage here, like just winding down the mountain, coming back home. The road wasn't too bad, so it was definitely worth the trip. It was worth checking it out. But when I got home, you know, I pulled the monitor out and it was just filthy. It, it, the, the description said that it was in storage. And as you can see, it was just, I didn't know if it was damaged or just dirty. And, and I said to my wife when I got home, I just said, oh, look, it's just garbage, you know what I mean? Because I had to leave straight away to go somewhere else. So anyway, I cleaned it up on the Monday and you, as you can see, it turned out all right. I'm really happy with it. You know, like something for free. And then I pulled out the, the test PlayStation, put on some centipede and then, yeah, you can see it's awesome. <laughs> I love to collect you know, random TVs and monitors for my collection, so to have that one for free, awesome. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the, the new format, the introduction to some of the, some of the gameplay. We'll see how it goes. In the comments, let me know what you liked and didn't like about the video. And anyone who stayed and watched the whole lot, thank you very much, you're the best. But yeah, then just getting back to that new 3DS when I played that, that thing just blows me away. It is so incredible sitting there. I'm just like, it's unbelievable. Like, the new 3DS is just one of the most amazing machines that I've ever seen in my whole game playing sort of, you know, sort of life, I guess you could say. <clears throat> and even just playing on the 2DS with the, chi the Chibi Robo, like that is a pretty cool machine too. So if you can't afford a new 3DS, even the 2DS is pretty awesome for that too. So thanks very much. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you next time.